I'm also a writer, a business owner, and the founder of mycuprunsover.ca, where my goal is to help moms find meaning and balance in their lives, homes, and homeschools. I'm so excited to join you today and talk about how we can help foster creativity in our kids through homeschooling. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jenny Ferranda, Head of Marketing and Business Development at Remote Classroom Australia and Philippines. Welcome to our Remote Learning Summit. Our guest for today is a work from home homeschool mom. She shares tips and strategies for homeschooling, raising creative children, and living a well-balanced, sustainable life. Her blog, which is My Cup Runs Over, helps busy mom to make small changes in their homes, lives, and homeschool to make things simpler and more sustainable. She offers resources to parents, enabling them to spend more time enjoying life and family. Let's welcome our guest for today, Sophie of My Cup Runs Over. Hello, Sophie. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And for our topic, uh, stimulating and encouraging a child's creativity, to all our viewers, kindly uh, comment where are you watching from? And if you have any questions to Sophie, feel free to um, comment your question below. Yes, Sophie, good morning. And <laughs> how are you? And yeah. How's your holiday, by the way, before we start our our interview portion? It was it was really nice. Yeah. Lots of time just doing nothing with the kids. <laughs> oh, that's you. So you, you basically uh, spend time with them, with your with your folks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, things are still pretty locked down here. Um, we weren't allowed to do a lot of stuff. So it was mm -hmm. actually really nice to just stay home. We ate yeah. a lot. We watched a lot <laughs> of movies. We did puzzles. Um, that was it. We just we watched movies and we ate. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, you, you have four kids, if I'm not mistaken. Is That's that right? We right. have okay. um, three girls. They're seven, 12 and 14. And then a, a boy who's almost five. Oh, great. OK, um, so we kindly introduce um, My Cups Runs Over. So can you tell us more about this brand of yours? I can. I mean, I think you did a great job. You covered everything I was going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, My Cup Runs Over is, it's primarily a website, mycuprunsover.ca. And I started it about four, I think four years ago now. Um, just, I really wanted to help, like you said, help moms um, who are trying to do it all, uh, to just do it all more efficiently, do it more simply so that we can enjoy doing it, you know? Yeah. So it's not just like we're doing it all and it's a heavy burden. Um, yeah. You know, we do these things, homeschooling and working and all of that, because we want to, we love our kids, we love our work and we want to do both, um, yeah. but it's, it's super hard. And so I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. I hope you don't mind me asking, what are your initial process to do it? Making sure that um, it's aligned with your, with your core values and also with the lifestyle that you have at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's actually a really good question because I think when you're running a website and a business, it's so easy to get caught up in True. what everybody else tells you to do and what mm -hmm. everybody else is doing. And you want to just say, oh, I want to do it all. I want to, you know, be on every platform. I want to publish five articles a week. And like, that's not sustainable. That doesn't fit with our lifestyle. Um, yeah. So you no, know, really the kids come first. Um, I'm also a writer. Uh, my, my real passion is writing fiction. Um, nice. So it has to come first for me as well. Um, yeah. You know, so I do, I wake up 
really early in the morning. I wake up at four o'clock and um, I have my my quiet time by myself and I do my writing um, and then I do a little bit of work before the kids ever get up and, and get some exercise in. And then I homeschool for the day. Um, and I try to fit in a little bit of work during the day and at night, but really, you know, that, that chunk of time before the kids get up is really when I get the best, it's the best part of my day in terms of getting stuff done. Yeah. Um, anything else is kind of just gravy, but, um, yeah, it's, it's not easy to balance for sure. Um, yeah. with so many kids at home, but yeah, it works. And, you know, I think it sets a good example for the kids to see that I have something else and, um, you know, I- I'm not giving up everything for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things that are for me, right. Um, my yeah. work, my writing and um, I think that's just a good example for them that you can have balance but you do have to be intentional and careful about it that's right and managing for kids today, um, how do you do it <laughs> <laughs> I got two it drives me nuts already but you have full it's hard you know every day I think a lot of it is like it's having routines and having schedules and trying to have those rhythms But at the same time, in the opposite way, like being really flexible and saying, you know, today might look totally different than yesterday. Um, You know, like today I'm meeting with you and that took a bit of preparation beforehand. Like it's it's morning for you, but it's four in the afternoon here. So, you know, I spent a lot more time working today than I would normally have spent. And, you know, the kids just have to be flexible. Thankfully, my older ones are like 12 and 14. So they're very responsible and they can just sort of um, take over. They can watch the little ones. Um, The little ones played they play, played Lego most of the day, um, played with dolls and the big ones read, they wrote, they did some of their work. They're really independent. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about today is just, you know, not feeling like you have to manage your kids all the time, just giving True. them some space, um, to just be creative and, and do their own thing. Cause they don't need True. to be micromanaged. I, yeah. And it's really important for us to have that communication that hey mommy is working we have same environment working from home at the same time you are studying here at home so we need to create that um very holistic environment for everyone to make mm-hmm. things work because if it's not gonna be it's gonna be very chaotic because as they've seen, we are working here at, at our own home, but at the same time, they are also studying. Yep. It's if we ha- we don't have that kind of structure, it will be a little bit chaotic for, for all of us. And having that good communication as well is very vital that the mm-hmm. kids needs to understand that, hey, this is my, my time that I need to work. And yes, you can do your own thing that you study and do your creative thing. Mm-hmm. So I think um, communication is very vital, Sophie, isn't it? It is. And, you know, I think moms shouldn't get the wrong idea and feel like they have to do all of that by themselves. You know, they shouldn't yeah. try to manage it all. Um because you can't do it all by yourself. Um, True. You know, for me, I have my husband here and he works from home as well. Um, uh, but he's very supportive of me and my work. And, you know, the times when I'm working, he stands guard <laughs> at the door. <laughs> I keep the kids away from the office. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's really just aware of my need for that uninterrupted time and yeah. you know I think a lot of um, moms who work from home and homeschool you know they have that or they have other family members who can be there maybe their own parents or yeah. um, a sister or even like a mother's helper you know if maybe if your husband doesn't work from home he can't really help you with that so maybe you have like a mother's helper who's coming in um, yeah. you know, for a couple of hours a day to buy you that time because you really it is really hard to do it by yourself if you don't have for example, teenagers who can help you like I do. Um, and we've yeah. used every yeah. combination of those things, you know, in getting to this point. <laughs> We're just in a sweet spot right now. Yeah. Though. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, um, Sophie, um, what inspires you to create your brand, which is My Cup Runs Over? Mm-hmm. And I, I understand that uh, you help a lot of parents uh, with, your, with this content that you are actually uh, providing to them. 
Yeah. So it's funny because I didn't really start out to create this business. I was actually trying to um, create a platform for my fiction writing um, Mm. because I had written a novel and I was like, okay, well, before I find an agent and a publisher, I'm going to build a platform. So I I created a website and I thought, okay, well, who's going to want to read my books? And I thought, well, probably people like me. (laughs) So I'll create a website and I'll talk about, you know, the things that I like and what I do and the books that I read and all that. And, you know, a lot of what I do is homeschooling. And so that sort of came out a lot. And over the course of that first year, it really became clear to me that um, that website couldn't really be, it couldn't so much be a platform for my fiction. Um, I needed to have sort of a separate thing that was really focused on that because by that time I was talking about, you know, food and um, homeschooling curriculum and parenting and all these things that really weren't related to me as an author, um, Mm -hmm. but that were on my heart and that I wanted to share with people. And so I kind of split those things into two. I created an author website for just for that. And then I really sort of dreamt about like, well, what what can I do with my cup runs over? Um, And I was looking around me and most of my friends are homeschool moms. And I could just see like, everybody is really struggling with some similar issues. We're Mm -hmm. overwhelmed. We're doing too much. We're taking on everything, but we feel like we're not doing enough. We always feel inadequate and we're completely ignoring our own needs because we just want to give our kids everything. Like we just want to be the best moms ever. And we're just going to like ignore the fact that we're human beings who also have needs that need to be fulfilled. Um, And I thought, you know, that's, that's a great goal, but it's really taking its toll on people. Like my friends are burning out. These young women are burning out really sure. early. And they're frustrated and they're resentful because, you know, they can't do the things that they dreamt about doing. Um, so I really sort of expanded the goal of the business and the website into helping moms um, try to find that balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like homeschooling is a marathon, you know, it's not a sprint. <laughs> if, yeah. if you want to do it all the way through, it, it really is. Um, And I think, you know, I always, when we started out, I always said, you know, I'll take it year by year. I'm not saying like we have to homeschool forever, but Mm -hmm. we'll just go for as long as it's working for us. And Mm -hmm. this year we actually tried sending one of our kids to school um, to see if that would be a better fit for her. And, you know, she basically came home right away. It wasn't a good fit. So at this point, you know, I'm pretty sure like we're in it for the long haul, you know, for all of these kids. So that could be like, for me, maybe 18 years of homeschooling, right? Um, Or maybe more, actually. I think it's like 20. (laughs) It's a long time. So we really have to take care of ourselves if we're going to make it through that, right? We can't do it all at once. True. Um, So I just saw like, okay, what can, you know, it's actually a challenge to myself. Like, what can I do to make my life simpler and more sustainable and more fulfilling? And then how can I take that and share it with people and help them do the same thing? Yeah. That's very well said. And so we, that's really vital for parents to understand that choosing homeschooling is, is, is a lifestyle because it will definitely fit your, your core, core value and what character that you want to uh, have your kids. Yeah. And it's, not, um, it's more of a practical learning. And sometimes parents are very overwhelmed with the things that Can I teach this subject or am I doing enough? What are your, you know, recommendation to parents feeling that way? Hmm. That I'm not, you know, I'm not fitted to to homeschool my kids because I'm, I can't teach math or I can't teach uh, a particular subject. Yeah, I don't think that those are the most important qualifications for homeschooling. Mm -hmm. I I don't think homeschooling is for everybody at all. I -hmm. I think it's definitely not for every family. Like you said, it really has to fit with your lifestyle and your core values. um, And that's not for everybody. So I think, you know, academics aside, you know, starting with that perspective of, you know, is this really what I want? Do I like being with my kids all day? (laughs) You know, is that (laughs) Is that what's best for me? Can I, can I afford to do that? You know, um, can I afford to spend the time in the day doing that? Um, am I patient with them? You know, do I, do I enjoy seeing them, you know, sort of struggle to learn new skills and then overcome those struggles? The learning part of it, that's the easy part, I think. Um, and we can, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but I think that 
you know, is this right for your personalities? Is it right for your family and your circumstances? Yeah. Um, and it isn't for everybody at all. Um, and you can learn all of those things. You know, if you say, you know, well, you, for example, a lot of people take their kids out of school because maybe the kids have a learning disability or mm -hmm. um, they're just not, they're not doing well in school. They're not getting the kind of attention that they need to thrive. And a mm -hmm. lot of parents who never really wanted to homeschool will say, okay, I'm going to take my kid home because they deserve better than this. And I, I'm the only one that can give them better. Yeah. Um, and from there, you just have to figure out, you know, how to make it work. And you can, if that's what you want. Yeah. Now, academically speaking, I think that, you know, in the younger years, like let's say up to grade five, um, I'm just picking that kind of at random, but I think that that is kind of a turning point, you know, grade four, grade five, depending on the kid, you know, a very independent kid. So and a more independent kid is going to start, you know, working on their own around that age. Other kids might take them a couple more years mm -hmm. up until, you know, grade five, grade six. I really think, you know, anybody who's gone to school can pick up, you know, a math curriculum, a science curriculum and read it with their kids and do the mm -hmm. assignment together and do the projects. I think if you can read, you can mm -hmm. homeschool, you know, uh, even if you, you know, you go on YouTube, you go on, you True. go on these educational websites. There's so many resources. resources. Out there. Yeah. You don't have True. to know all that stuff. You know, yeah. homeschooling is about learning. It's about you making a commitment to lifelong learning for yourself and your children, right? Yeah. So you're right alongside them. I, I, I don't know a lot of these things that we're studying, but we're just learning it together, right? And yeah. then when you get to that sort of turning point where things get a bit more serious, like middle school, high school, um, at that point, you really don't want to be facilitating all those subjects yourself. If mm -hmm. you have, so for me, like I'm a writer, that's, that's my sort of biggest strength. So I'll probably teach my kids writing all the way through, but mm -hmm. I don't want to teach them math. I don't want to teach them science. I mean, I love math, but I'm not a math teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, around grade six, we put our kids into Mr. D math. Um, mm -hmm. And we tried many math programs before we did that, but um, that was the one that really clicked for us. And I'm totally hands off with the math. I do nothing. And they mm -hmm. are doing you excellent, right? So you get into these, you find the curriculum that works for you. It can be yeah. you know, hands-on, hands-off, online, offline. You just find what works for you, works for your kids. Yeah. And, you know, you just do it together. Um, I think, you know, in terms of people are looking for curriculum ideas and the best way to sort of find a curriculum that suits their family. Um, Kathy Duffy is the person I would recommend for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, go to her website, pick up her books and, you know, she reviews every curriculum, um, like everything. She's amazing. Um, and she has some really great assessments that you can do to look at, you know, your strengths, your lifestyle, your kids learning style and mm -hmm. figure out what curriculum is going to fit in best for you. Yeah, very well said. I uh, that's really um, amazing how we we have a lot of resources right now, and yeah, it's really important for parents to um, to have that support. So, for example, if they can't teach math, they can ask you know a help from a tutor or mm -hmm. probably an uncle that can you know that can help them for yeah. um, to explain it. Not you know, it's really important not to overwhelm ourselves that if you can't teach that we can have other platforms or other resources that can help our kids exactly isn't it yeah, yeah. and uh you know sophie this is a very interesting topic and uh because we are very aligned when, when i talked to you a few weeks ago because i'm so excited because we're aligned we love creativity me myself i i um i enjoy designing and creating stuff so um I, I know that you're going to uh, share some slide, but I want to ask this uh, question. Why, why is creativity is important to our, uh, to our child's learning? Hmm. Um, so that my slides actually start here. So let me share with you if that's okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Um, all right. Are you seeing that? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So let me advance it here. Okay, so I just thought I would um, just give a few slides. Um, there's nothing revolutionary there, but um, I, as I was making my notes for this, I thought, well, I am saying so many things. I thought maybe I just better write a few things down in case people want to take a screenshot or take a photo of it. Um, they don't yeah. have to try to take some mad notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so 
I think that, you know, one of our roles as parents is to prepare our children for the future and to give them the, the tools that they're going to need to take care of themselves when they grow up. Right. And one part of that that's really important is that they're going to need to be able to earn a living. Right. They'll have to be mm -hmm. able to provide for themselves and their families. Uh, but one of the fundamental changes that we're seeing in our lifetime is a shift in the types of jobs that people do and the skills that are needed to do those jobs, right? And to have meaningful work. So if we look at like the last century, um, I think, I, I can't speak for all over the world, but I think mostly all over the world, anywhere that the industrial revolution impacted, which should be most places, um, society has valued people who can fit in and follow rules and systems and basically become like cogs in a machine, right? And just do very routine tasks on repeat um, because that's really what the industrial revolution led to. And there's like, there's nothing wrong with doing that kind of work or even liking that kind of work, that's fine. But with, with technology evolving the way it has, so much of that work has now been taken over by like robots and computers and software and apps, right? Anything that can be um, like systemized and automated can be taken over by um, a digital system, right? Yeah. And so we are competing against computers for jobs and they're willing to work for <laughs> cheaper than we are, right? Yeah. And they don't, they don't need sick days or time off or anything like that. So in some ways, this is like, it can be scary for some people to think about like how many jobs are being lost to that. But it, it's, at the same time, like, I think this is a really big opportunity because it means that as humans, like our greatest competitive advantage is to lean into one of the traits that is like most central to our humanity, which is our ability to be creative, right? Like mm -hmm. we were created as creative beings. Um, and so for those people who learn to think outside of the box and aren't afraid to explore new solutions to complex problems, there's always going to be demand for them and their work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they will always be needed and their work will be interesting and meaningful um, because they get to explore and try new things and bring their ideas to life. For me that, I mean, not everybody is motivated by that but many, many people are. Um, and so for the people that are, you know, they're gonna have just a world of opportunity to them if they can develop those skills. And I yeah. think, you know, if we can encourage our kids now when they're young to develop those creative skills and problem solving skills, then we're setting them up to succeed in those kinds of roles later. Like right mm -hmm. now, they're like sponges, right? So they just pick up everything that's going on around them. They, they love to learn how to solve problems, right? And it, they might take a long time to solve it today, but tomorrow they're gonna solve that same problem so much faster, right? Because yeah. their minds are brilliant. Like I look at my kids and I'm like, man, the, my four-year-old, you know, he picks things up so fast and he, he, you know, I'll show him how to do something. And the next day he's showing me how to do it better. Right. My brain can't keep up and I'm looking at it. I'm like, I wish I had, they have, the, they have a different process already. You know, like they're, yeah. so, they're so quick to develop those skills and get better at it, which is such an exciting thing to watch, right? To see your kids solving problems creatively is just like so amazing. Um, so I just think this is the perfect time for them to start embracing their creativity and developing, you know, the processes of creativity um, and the ability to solve problems. Very well. And uh Creativity is a trait, as you, as I can see here in your, um, in your slide. So yeah. how we can, how the kids can develop that? Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of sort of group this into four different things that I think can encourage um, creativity mm -hmm. for kids. Um, now I'm not saying everybody needs to like go out tomorrow <laughs> and put all of this into place, right? Um, I think it's a mindset that we want to get into of like, um, you know, like, again, homeschooling is a marathon. It's not a sprint, you know, mm -hmm. so over the years, you don't have to get this all right right now. Just over the years, these are things that you can start thinking about and implementing. Like we've been homeschooling for 10 years, so I've had like a lot of time to practice this. <laughs> but, you know, this is just sort of what I've, 
you know, when I look back on the past 10 years, these are the things that I think have really helped my kids to be so creative. Um, so the first one here is space. Okay. So, um, hold on, let me back up a sec. What I want to actually say first is that we, kids are actually naturally creative, right? They mm -hmm. are more creative than we are. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard that statistic that creativity actually peaks at age six. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when kids start going to school, right? And because the school system is based on, like it's still based on the needs of those industrial revolution era jobs, you know, kids are basically having their creativity stripped and they're taught to conform you know, mm -hmm. and follow rules and solve problems this way, you know, color inside that square with a red crayon, <laughs> like mm -hmm. do that. And that's what you're marked on, you know, don't go and use a blue crayon or don't color your own picture outside the square, color the square. Um, and so I think, you know, as homeschoolers, we kind of have this unique opportunity to not let that happen, you know, yeah. and to allow our kids, like if, especially if we're homeschooling from the beginning and never having them go into school system, we, they already have this creativity. All we're doing is nurturing it. Okay. Yeah. So these are the things that nurture it. So giving them space. Okay. So this to me is the most important thing and space. It can mean physical space. Um, so like making sure that there's room in your home where they can like pull things out and make a little bit of a mess and try new things and fail. You know, maybe they're setting up like a marble run with wooden blocks or Legos, or um, maybe they're doing clay or building like a diorama or they're sewing and they want to put a sewing machine on the table, but we want to create spaces where they can do that. Um, preferably like inside and outside, you know, so if there's like a patio or a yard or something like that, where they can also build, that's great. Now, not everyone's going to have room for that at their house. Um, so, you know, you have to, if you don't, then you have to be proactive and you got to find somewhere to go with them. You know, if your house, if you're in an apartment and it's crowded and you don't have any outdoor space or anything like that, you might have to go places. So, um, you know, you can go and sit in a park, you can sit on, you know, on the grass or sit at a picnic table. You can go to a library. Um, yeah. You can take like a good, sign them up for a good unstructured art class. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Um, but, you know, unstructured meaning that someone's not telling them every single thing they have to do. Yeah. Um, or again, like a homeschool co-op, you know, like uh, if someone else is hosting kids at their house and saying, you know, come over and make a mess, go. <laughs> go. <laughs> like take advantage of that, right? Um, <laughs> You know, you want to go anywhere where kids can be free to try things out, you know? Yeah. I know a lot of moms I, and I've, I've become a mom like that. You know, I'll say, you know, I'll let kids come over and say, you know, yeah, like just do this stuff. But that's because I saw all these other moms doing it, you know, where my kids would be welcomed into other people's homes and um, could just be free to do such cool stuff. And I think, oh God, the mess. Yeah. <laughs> they, love it. they love it so much. You know, those are their favorite things to do. So we really have to give them the physical space. But I think like even more important than that is giving them the mental mental and emotional space. Um, they need breathing room, unstructured time and freedom. So mm -hmm. like creativity cannot be turned on and off and people yeah. who are stressed out and running around from one activity to another are not going to get as much of a chance to lean into their creativity. It can't be like, okay, I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to be creative right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, right? True. Um, so I think you want to try to keep your schedule as open and, oops, there's a typo, sorry, and flexible as possible mm -hmm. um, so that kids have the time to create. I just recently, um, I received an email from someone that I follow the other day, and she was talking about this concept of um, manager time and maker time. And it's kind of a business concept, but I think it can apply here. And I was saying like some people, you know, they really do best with really structured time, like time, everything's blocked out, you know, every 15 minutes, this is what I'm doing. And they can move mm -hmm. really quickly from activity to activity. I'm personally like that. And I, I do that because that's how I get things done is with my time blocking. Um, but yeah. I also leave, you know, big sort of open spaces, you know, three, four hours a day that are kind of just open. But mm -hmm. the other kind of time is maker time. And what she was saying is that people who are makers, um, they don't work like that. They can't move on a schedule like that. They need 
to just sort of sit and be free to explore what they're working on for a really good period of time. So like I said, like three or four hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's good if we can offer our kids both, you know, both of those, like have your structured time, but then also have chunks of unstructured time where they're just allowed to explore. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, really, really well said, uh, Sophie. And um, with that kind of space, so for example, because due to COVID, if, uh, for example, there's a li limited space at home and um, they can't go out, do you have any recommendation how they do it to have that kind of space for the kids? Yeah, COVID has been really difficult. Um, it For us, you know, we used to go to a lot of people's houses and get together for these kinds of activities. And mm -hmm. we haven't really done that for a couple of years. So it's been really hard. Um, I'm not exactly, I'm not sure, you know, where everyone, what, what their um, environments are like outside mm -hmm. right now, but something we've really enjoyed is going into the forest and creating in the forest. Yeah. Um, you know, my, I put my daughter in a forest school and they go into the forest and they kind of just, um, it's this whole thing, this forest, it's almost like, you know, Montessori, and then you have, you know, font forest school, um, pedagogy, and they go into the forest and they hang out for hours and they create all kinds of stuff. The kids lead the way and, you know, they make shelters and bridges and nests and, you know, do art and write poetry and, um, you know, outdoors is the safest place to be, you know, with, uh, in COVID times. Yeah. Um, so anywhere where you can get out and do stuff like that, you know, if it's hot, go to the beach, um, go to the park. Um, if you have public libraries, you can go there. Um, it's, you know, that's inside. So it's a little bit, you know, riskier, but most of them have, um, you know, strong restrictions about masks and distancing and all that. But yeah, um, it's really important to just find anywhere to go anywhere that you can just go. It doesn't have yeah. to be fancy or anything like that. But um, just somewhere where they can explore. Yeah. What I like about this um, presentation that you have uh, having that mental and emotional, emotional space. So um, I think this is really vital, uh, especially for kids that, you know, they don't have that um time at the moment due to covid that they can go out and spend um time with with their friends and but having that you know open communication with parents that yeah you need that space if you you need to meditate or probably attend some online yoga classes just yep. to align your um align yourself um yeah, so it can help them as well to have that um, to have that mental space, and um, probably they're very overwhelmed with their schoolwork, and it can help them to free their thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. And it, like it, it really doesn't have to be, you know. Um, it doesn't have to be something you put effort into as a parent. You know, for yeah. me. Like my kids probably spend half of today playing Lego in their room. You know, mm -hmm. that that's what I'm talking about. You know, it doesn't have to be me organizing something for them. You know, yeah. if I if I'm with them, absolutely I'm gonna do the Lego too. <laughs> They're teaching me. <laughs> but like, you know, just to let them and they come up with these amazing things, you know. Um, it doesn't have to be um something fancy. It's just, you know, okay, you're you entertain yourself for a bit. You know, like I'm not always going to be telling you what to do with your time. You get to mm -hmm. pick, yeah. you know, and that's a gift to them. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So I think the next thing they need is inspiration because, yeah. you know, it's like they might not know, right? And and I think, you know, we, when we talk about creativity, we can talk about a lot of different things. Like we could be just talking about, you know, art, fine art, you know, drawing, music, dancing, that sort of thing. But of course, creativity is found in every field, um, you know, architecture, construction, gardening, decorating your house, um, writing. Creativity is everywhere, uh, maybe except for accounting. I think you're not supposed to be a, a creative when you're accounting. <laughs> Um, but, you know, actually, you know, one of my closest friends is an accountant um, and she's also a very creative person. She just doesn't use her creativity at work. She does it at yeah. home. You know, she she um, 
or uh, arranges flowers and she decorates her house, you know, with really creative ways. Um, but yeah. kids might need some ideas, right, to get them started. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that we can we can inspire kids as parents by setting an example. Um, mm -hmm. We can make margin in our schedules, which is really hard because as we've already talked about, our schedules are full. But we can say, you know what, like I'm going to stop and slow down and I'm going to take time and try something new. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that might be trying a new recipe. It could be taking up painting or dancing or building a garden or learning to play an instrument. Right. Mm -hmm. um, these are all things that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't leave myself time because I'm so busy structuring my kids time and that takes up a lot of my time. And it's like, well, you know, maybe I just want to sit around painting too. So why not? Like we're homeschooling. Why not do that? Right. Yeah. Um, and we can invite them to join us in that. Right. We can say, look, I'm going to paint. And sometimes, you know, uh, so the other day, you know, okay, this is not, it's not the best example, <laughs> but um, I, because it wasn't a creative thing, but I wanted to watch this old movie and I didn't think my kids would necessarily get excited about watching this old movie. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually just put it on and sat down and started watching it in the living room, which is, I never do that. I don't, I, I'm never the person to initiate movies or TV time in our house, but I just put this movie on in the middle of the day and I sat down and started watching it. And before I knew it, all of them were sitting around me watching it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so sometimes we don't actually even have to invite them to join us in something. We just, um, we just start doing it and they just gravitate towards it. If we're doing something interesting, they want to check it out too. Right. Yeah. Um, in our family. So something that we've been doing a lot of in the past year is gardening. Um, we bought a house and we built a garden and, um, our kids are always outside with us when we're gardening. Um, and we invite them to help us, you know, dig, shovel the dirt, dig, plant the seeds, water the garden, um, you know, pull the weed, pick the food. They love picking the food the best, <laughs> um, you know, but so they're out there, you know, and they might be um, doing that, but they also might be taking some of the vegetables and we have like a little play kitchen in the backyard and maybe they're opening up a restaurant in the kitchen or a farmer's market, you know, so they might be going back and forth or we we've been kind of collecting like some used items, like old tires. We got our tires, new tires on our car. We put the old ones in the backyard and they just play with those um, or, and they take pool noodles and they make like an obstacle course. So we kind of just like, let them move back and forth between, you know, helping with us and then creating their own things. Yeah. Um, but usually when we're, when we're out there doing something, they want to get in on it as well. Yeah. And then the second thing about, you know, inspiring them is to try to say yes, as much as possible. Um, and I think, you know, even if you don't think that they can do it, or you would rather if they didn't do it, <laughs> um, unless you have like a really valid reason for saying no, I would really encourage you to try to say yes. Um, and if you do have to say no, because maybe they're asking to do this big project, and it's like 15 minutes before you're going to serve dinner, you know, mm -hmm. then you can say, well, can we do that first thing tomorrow morning? Or can we do that after dinner? You know, depending on your schedule, like maybe this is not the best time to start that, but I, I definitely want to let you do it, but let's, let's put it on, you know, the schedule for first thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, to give you an example of how this worked in our life, um, several years ago, probably four years ago now, my oldest girls were eight and 10. And they came to me in like the, you know, around this time of year, about February. And they said, you know, we really want to write some plays and put them on in the backyard with our friends. And I was like, no way. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, like, that sounds like such an innocent idea, but like, it's going to be so much work and your friend's parents aren't going to agree to that. You know, they're not going to want to give up their summer to send their kids over here to do this. And, you know, they pushed and they pushed and I said, okay, you write the plays. And then if you write the plays and you finish them, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I'll, I'll have the kids over and I'll, I'll arrange for this to happen. And, and they did, they wrote the plays. They wrote two plays with six songs and they found 10 friends whose parents were willing to let them come over for a week. Nice. <laughs> and they directed these shows. They taught them the singing. They brought the piano outside. Um, they recorded the songs themselves they did the choreography and everything. And then at the end of the week, we had this big party and we had like 50 people over. This is before. Wow. 
And um, they, they did a big performance and it was amazing. And then we started to do it every year. And now it's nice. like, it's part of our life to the point that like when we bought our house, we, we were like, okay, well, we have to get a house with a yard where we can perform. <laughs> we need a stage in our backyard. Um, and, you know, now they're at the point, like four years later, where they actually want to start their own musical theater company. And it yeah. all started with that idea and me saying yes to them, right? So you never know where things are going to lead when you say yes to your kids. Wow, that's amazing. This one is not in the, it's not in the slides because it's kind of just, it's a, a bit of an aside, but I just, I don't know, ever since we talked, I felt like I wanted to mention this because this is something that, um, that happened to us that just really was a catalyst for some creative um, activity in our house. But we, you know, not all moms feel super creative, right? Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. creative, I love creating, but not all moms are up for that. Um, mm -hmm. But you, you don't have to be the sole inspiration, right? You can look online. There's so many creative people online that we can look to and see what they're doing, right? And we love to yeah. like go on YouTube and see what people are up to. And one of our favorite YouTube channels is called Joseph Machines. And it's this guy who has like dedicated his life and his YouTube channel to making Rube Goldberg machines, you know, which are these really complicated machines to do a very simple task. And he lives in New York, he has this little apartment, but he'll have this machine that takes up his whole apartment using just everyday objects. And it will do something like, put salt on his food or, you know, drop a ball down. You know, it's crazy. You look it up. It's called Joseph's machine, you know, but you look at this and honestly kids see that and they get so many ideas of things that they want to do. Um, yeah. Just fascinating how, how much creativity is out there. So, you know, as a mom, you know, as you're online, every time you come across something like this, maybe just have a Pinterest board or like a folder in your, you know, your browser where you're saving this stuff and then just share yeah. it with your because it's so cool. Yeah, and 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 definitely, it's um, as parents, it's really uh, important for us to sometimes initiate, but let them also initiate their own interests as well. And as a parent, we need to acknowledge that how they're gonna direct it and how we can support them to make that vision happens. Absolutely. That is like a hundred percent what um, I'm going to say. <laughs> like you got to go with the flow, you know, like we can introduce them to things, but they're going to just do their own thing with it. That's right. And, you know, just sharing my son, um, because he's he was really excited for Christmas and uh, what he want is to, to buy some gifts for his, um, for his cousins and aunties and uncles. So, I told him, where are you going to get the money? <laughs> I'm not just going to give you money just like that. And he just came uh, an idea to, to sell some chocolate. And, and I told him, I asked him, how, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Well, we're going to buy some chocolate and then uh, you will help me um, cook, cook for it. And what, what are the ingredients that might, that, the buyer might like uh to buy your chocolate and he can he can you know give some ideas like we can put some mint we can put some this ingredient to make uh it taste better yeah. and then yeah we start you just basically you know ask them what they really want yeah. to have that um to have to make that happen and then we we prepare that chocolate and we sell that chocolate and then he sold some he got money and then he bought some gifts to for his um, cousins and teas and uncles and aunties. So he was mm. really happy. I think he got five hundred pesos. <laughs> um, you you just basically need to ask them what they really want, yeah. and if um, the intention is really good, that will. And he he able to realize that huh when when I sell things and if I create things, I can definitely earn a living or I can get something mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. You know, like those are the exact skills that people need today. Yeah. And as those parents, we need, we just basically need, need to ask them and how we can direct them yeah. and how we can help them to make it happen. And then they take ownership of it, right? Because it's their yeah. thing. Um, and yeah. they can do it their way. And it's so, it's so great for them. It's great for their self-esteem and yeah. it teaches them so many different skills. True. 
So yeah. let me let me keep going because I, I have a few more things to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to run out of time. Um, so I think, you know, the next thing we need to do is, um, you know, fill our environment with things that will help them with their creative endeavors. And, you know, this isn't necessarily going to happen overnight either. And I know, like, the trend right now is to be a minimalist and to have as little stuff as possible. But yeah. I think, you know, when you have when you're homeschooling and you have creative kids, you need to have some things that they can create with. Yes. Um, you know, you can't just have nothing. So I just put together a list of some of the things that we have really enjoyed having. Um, so, you know, art supplies, we have a whole corner of our kitchen is dedicated to art supplies. These are some of the things that we keep out all the time. Just lots of paint and paint brushes, not oil paint though. Don't let kids use oil paint. Um, <laughs> different kinds of paper, scissors, glue, pencils, pens, you know, things to color with all this stuff, you know, things to do crafts with um, glue gun, hot glue guns. They love that. We have sewing machines. Um, and then over the years, we've done different things, knitting, crocheting, all, all that kind of stuff like that. Um, scrapbooking materials are great. Washi tape, um, anything like that, anything that's fun and, and cool looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, musical instruments are a good one. Um, you know, try to buy cheaper musical instruments when kids are around and when they're little, because um, they might not like them, they might not play them. And also they're going to be really tough on them. But you know, if you can find them like used and that kind of thing, like ukuleles and drums and tambourines, um, it's great, you know, just to encourage them to play around with it. And then sometimes, you know, you don't have to start out saying, okay, I'm going to give them piano lessons, you know, from the time they're five just put a keyboard in the room and see if they're interested in it. You know, like not everybody needs to learn how to play the piano, but they might have develop an interest for it. And then, then maybe you want to get them into lessons. Mm -hmm. um, building supplies are big. So these are just a few of the um, sort of brands of, of building supplies that I find are the most interesting. We really like snap circuits too. Um, have you heard of those? Which one is that? Snap uh, circuit? Snap no. circuit? No, What's it's that? so fun. Like, there's all these different sets that you can get and they're basically like motherboards and you're you're creating like circuits with wires and batteries and light bulbs and all these different things and you can create very simple ones or very complex ones there's like full-on instruction so it's like a really good introduction to like electrical engineering for kids um and it's so good for problem solving oh. <laughs> i just oh. i really love that um a recycle oh sorry let me let me advance this here um, recycled materials are a big one in our house. Um, you know, we do a lot of recycling here um, in British Columbia. And so we have in our kitchen, like big recycling bins that are always full of like paper and containers and cardboard and magazines and all of this stuff. Um, anything like old clothes, we keep that, we let them cut it up and do things with it. It's hard to get rid of stuff, honestly. I mean, I, I have different stages for everything i'm triaging materials all the time like okay how likely are they to use this and you know how much room does it take up <laughs> um and then of course you know edu educational materials because like you know their own creativity will take them so far but then if they get really interested in something you're going to want to like um have resources for them to go beyond what they can do by themselves so like um one of my daughters took up digital drawing we got kindles and and she took up drawing on that and we ended up getting an ipad pretty quickly because it was not very easy to draw on the kindle but you know she could do a lot she figured out a lot on her own but now she's like sort of come up against the limit of what she can do on her own so now she's like looking at youtube tutorials and online courses to see you know how to take that to the next level and then of course like lots and lots of books like you can really never have too many books <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, these days kids also, you know, are creative with digital tools. Um, and of course you want to have like supervision there and, you know, you don't want to just say, here's a phone, do whatever you want with it, but they can make videos, movies, they can make cool movies on the phone, Yeah. Um, yeah camera, true. you know, computer with like editing software, they can just create all kinds of cool stuff that like we wouldn't even dream about. You know, and if you're running a business before long, your kids might be like managing your Pinterest or your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there, there's um, advantages there for them to learn those skills early. 
So, you know, let your kids use those things as much as possible. And like you said, you know, let them take the lead, you know, don't come in and say, you know, you have to, um, you know, do it this way or do it that way. Just let them show you. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, eventually if, if something really takes hold, then you might want to put them in lessons for it. But mm-hmm. I would just, just a note of caution, you know, when you put kids in lessons, be, be careful when you pick a teacher that you yeah. pick a teacher who will help them embrace their creativity. Um, yeah. My kids are excellent artists and we put them in an art class when they were maybe seven and nine ish. And it was a very top-notch art school, Um, but the teacher was so strict and not encouraging of their creativity that they actually stopped doing art. They refused Mm -hmm. to do it because they they thought that they couldn't do anything good enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And we actually took them out after a year and it took a couple of years before they started doing art again because Mm -hmm. they were so, their creativity had just been squashed. Um, Mm -hmm. So you really want to find a teacher that's going to just encourage them to, you know, pursue their own styles. Like you, obviously they need foundations, but they also need to, you know, work with the individual child and, and let them bring their own creativity to a creative art like that. That's right. And embracing their authenticity as an artist as well. Exactly. So the last point there is just, um, you know, to limit the creativity hindering activities. So Mm -hmm. there's some things that are obviously like less conducive to encouraging creativity than other things. So, you know, things that are passive, like watching TV or playing video games, um, it can get in the way of creativity because um, entertainment is just being served up to them and they don't have to think about it. Um, which is like, it's not to say that we can't find inspiration in those things at all. We totally can, you know, like my kids watch a lot of these baking competitions and then they want to go and like bake all these things. Right. So like for sure, TV can be a jumping off point, but we want to balance that and say, okay, maybe yeah. you're watching an hour of this and then, you know, turn it off and you do something, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Um, we just want to make sure that they have a good balance and that's hard. Like it's hard when you're home all day to not let your kids gravitate towards their devices because when they're on devices, they're pretty easy to take care of. Um, You know, but you want to make sure like, how are they using the devices? Like, are they creating, are they learning about, you know, something creative? Are they, you know, is it benefiting them in some way? Are they just, you know, zoning out, Um, which, you know, there's a place and a time for that, but you don't want to do it all the time. Right. Okay. With that, with that, Sophie, uh, for example, you you do have a set of limits. Um, Okay. You can watch um, a particular content that you want for an hour or so, or how do you set the limits for the kids? Yeah, that's what I do. I mean, we didn't have TV for the first 10 years that we were parents. We just got a TV. Someone gave us a TV, (laughs) which I was not very happy about, but um, we ended up with a TV and then, so, you know, TV became a part of our lives and I'm pretty strict. I kind of have rules, you know, like one, one movie or a couple of shows three times a week. Um, And sometimes it's a little bit more than that. You know, sometimes you're desperate and you need a break and you put the TV on for them. And when I do that, I try to, you know, pick something educational or um, inspiring for them. Um, Mm -hmm. And not always, you know, sometimes a movie is just a movie. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I try to like, um, you know, my two older girls, they also like they love writing stories. And I think, you know, they love to watch like the Marvel movies. That's their big thing right now. And I'm always like, oh, they spend so much time watching these movies, you know, but I think it is for them helpful, you know, it's helping them to understand narrative and story structure and, you know, characters. And we talk about those things like we talk about, we'll be watching a movie and my daughter who loves writing the most will be like, oh, is this the dark night of the soul? (laughs) You know, like she'll pick out these points in the movie. And I think, you know, we can use, we can use shows and movies um, as learning moments. Not always, right? Because that takes, it takes the fun out of it. If you're always like, we have to learn something from everything. (laughs) Sometimes you just want to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, if we can have a chance to learn from it, we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was just going to talk for a minute about how we can sort of integrate creative thinking and practical learning. Um, yeah. cause you know, people might be wondering, well, are we just going to sit around all day playing Lego and making crafts? <laughs> like, you know, how are we going to do math or, you know, how are we going to learn how to write those kinds of things? Right. So 
we do want to have a balance, but I really think that creativity can be built into everything, right? Um, we just need to sort of look at how to do it. So the first thing I think we can do is to integrate problem solving skills into everyday tasks. Um, so for me, like when a problem comes up, I like to bring it to my kids and see what solutions they can come up with. Kind of like you did right with your son where you said, you know, okay, well, this is what you want. You know, what are you going to do about it? So, you know, like I might be looking in the fridge and I'm like, I don't know what to make for lunch today. So I might say to them, okay, well, what do you think we should make for lunch? And maybe, you know, you can help put it together. And, um, and then they, you know, they can really take over with that idea. Or maybe sometimes like we've overbooked our day and I might say, okay, look, I'm looking at our schedule and I don't think we can fit it all in. What do you guys think mm -hmm. we should do? You know, how are we going to do yeah. this? So it gives them a chance to, you know, it's, it's a little bit different, but they're looking at those things in our schedule as these sort of tangible blocks that they have to arrange, right? How are they going to yeah. fit that? Yeah. Um, so it's not creative in the sense that they're, you know, bringing a creation to, to life, but it's helping them to problem solve, right? Which then helps them with those other things, you know, that would help them. Maybe they're writing a story and they've got too many ideas for their story. How do they move those around? Um, mm -hmm. So all of those things are transferable skills. Um, I think we can also um, take a creative approach to our curriculum and our teaching. Mm -hmm. Not every subject needs to be taught from a textbook. And, you know, I think for us, like we knew that like in kindergarten, I didn't have any textbooks. The first year we homeschooled, I just totally winged it. I was like, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we were so creative. Um, and then I, I discovered Kathy Duffy <laughs> and then I went out and I bought all the curriculum and we became slaves to textbooks, you know, and, um, you know, we had all these books and worksheets and it was kind of boring, you know, it wasn't fun and the kids weren't as interested anymore. And it took a while for us to say, okay, like, let's keep trying new things and see, you know, what fits with us. And we did like, we, you know, every subject we had to try new things. So you, you can do that. You can, you can look for curriculum that, you know, fits with your desire to be more creative or is more project based, or you can come up with your own, you know, you can look at, you know, what are our learning objectives for the year and what are some creative ways that we can do that? Like, mm -hmm. for example, with the, like my son is obsessed with Lego. So when we do math, we're always using Lego, you know, his math is Lego math. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. Like that works for him. And, you know, he might build something at the same time, but, you know, we're always working that in. And like, for example, our musical theater program that we do now, like we can cover entrepreneurship there because it's like yeah. they're running a business, right? There's costs and there's, you know, we run a bake sale to cover the costs, just like your son. And yeah. um, so there's entrepreneurship there. There's music because they're writing the songs. There's art because they're making costumes and sets. There's dance. There's leadership. There's career prep. So there's so many things that we can just teach through those creative endeavors, right? We don't need to do get a textbook and worksheets for all of those things. Um, but there's, you know, not every, I recognize that not everyone has the time or the capacity or the desire to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of work, right? It's a lot more work. And if you're a working mom who's homeschooling, which my understanding is everyone who's listening to this is a working mom who's homeschooling. Yeah. Yes. You don't have, you don't have a lot of time to create your own homeschool curriculum. You really want something that's really plug and play. Like you want it sort of that's created and you can just implement it. Um, yes. And those are out there too. I think that um, traditional publishers don't have as many of those, but I think, you know, you can look people like me <laughs> who are sort of like online content creators that are homeschoolers are putting out some really interesting stuff. Um, you know, we subscribe to one of my homeschool blogger mom friends has something called the literary clubhouse and she does book studies there and there's all kinds of books and I love it because I don't have to do any prep. It's, you know, we read a book and we watch a video and we do projects and it's all there and it's, it's, it fits in really well with our lifestyle. So I think, you know, looking at some of these smaller creators and seeing what they have. And again, you know, Kathy Duffy reviews um, content, even that kind of content that's mm -hmm. made by digital creators rather than traditional publishers. So um, you can find that kind of stuff there. Or I'm going to give you in the, um, in the next slide or two, I'm going to give people my email. So if they if anyone wants to reach out and talk about this stuff, I can yeah. always, you know, if you're looking for something particular, I can 
try to help you find it. Um, I also, I have for writing, I offer um, a creative writing bundle on my website. Um, and it's really great for getting kids excited about creative writing. I offer like over 500 writing prompts and a story planner and lots of activities and games that gets kids excited about writing. Um, so I can give you more information about that um, on the next slide as well. Um, but it's great for those kinds of things are great for homeschooling parents who don't who want to do the more creative teaching I don't want to put together their own thing <laughs> yeah and then the last thing is to just make it a habit you know because like everything else creativity it needs to be practiced in order to become yeah. an ingrained habit like you can't just say I want to be creative you have to commit to it and practice it so you know when I'm building a habit I like to spend you know 15 to 30 minutes every day doing something creative. Like I, I, I did say before, you can't just say we're going to be creative for 15 minutes. But, you know, if you say if you say that and leave yourself a bit of extra time, you know, it might turn into an hour. You don't know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you sit down and do it with them for 15 minutes, they might keep doing it for an hour and you can go make dinner. Right. Or you can go and send an email or whatever you need to do. You just getting them started. Right. And it doesn't matter yeah. what it is. The more things that you can introduce them to, the better. You just want to make a habit of helping them take their ideas and make them real. Um, okay. And then I think you'll start to see them doing it themselves. Nice. Okay. Um, can I just uh, ask a, a little bit of a follow-up question? With this um, tips that you gave us, uh, with a practical learning, why do you think it's for parents, it's, it's important for them to, to make this work? Um, to find the right curriculum for their kids and uh, to build this kind of habit for them uh, to help their kids become creative, uh, creative being. Okay, well, I think I feel like that's maybe two questions there. So with the curriculum, I really believe you have to find learning materials that suit your family, because I think yeah. that everyone will be miserable if you don't. Mm -hmm. We have used so many curriculum and I think, you know, I, I'm saying this from the perspective of I'm someone that reviews homeschool curriculum, you know, I yeah. get sent a lot of stuff and we've tried all of it and it's all great. It's all great curriculum, but not all of it is great for my family. You know, yeah. I can give my kids a math program that I think is amazing and they think it sucks. You know, they don't like the style of it. They don't like the questions. They feel like it's too easy. It's too hard. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not their learning style. Um, and then for me, you know, I might, I've tried a lot of writing curriculum and I might look at it and, you know, I think this is brilliant, but then it takes me like an hour to prep. I got to read, you know, 20 pages before I can start the lesson. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have the time. And I notice, you know, I'll notice that we're only doing this curriculum every two weeks because every time it's on our schedule every day, I'm like, I don't want to do it. You know, that's a sign. If you're, if you're looking at a curriculum on your schedule and you're saying, okay, we're supposed to be opening this book right now and yeah. you're cringing or your kids are crying and saying, no, that's a sign <laughs> that you need to do something else. Right. And don't yeah. ever be afraid to quit a curriculum. You know, yes, you've spent money on it, good money on it, but if it's not working, it's not worth it. Stop mm -hmm. it and find something mm -hmm. else even if it's even if you're not going to use a curriculum we've stopped a math curriculum before and i've just you know wrote out questions by hand you know find something there's so many things out there you want to find something that works for you and like the amount of time that you have to put into it and your teaching style some people like scripted lessons some people like things where it's just prompts you know talk to your kids about this and then it's just like a prompt, but some people like it, here's exactly what you're going to say, you know, you want to find one that suits you, but it has to suit your kids to like, not all kids can sit for half an hour and do worksheets, you know, yeah. a lot of kids, can, but some of them can, you know, mm -hmm. so you really have to see. And I think your other question, like, why, why should people care about helping their kids become more creative? It's like I said, like, I think, I think in the long run, Creativity is the key to uh, securing good jobs, for one, yeah. um, securing meaningful work, you know, 
especially if you're a creative person um, at heart, you're going to need work that allows you to express your creativity. So, yeah. you know, you have to work on that. And I think, you know, even just in terms of like our enjoyment as humans, like I think we were created as creative people and we have to, we, I don't think we should be suppressing it. I really yeah. don't. Sometimes that, you know, small thing um, that you really want in life can do magic. And um, just a quick, just sharing this uh, because I love gardening as well. And um, because my, my mom, when my, when my mom uh, got sick, um, I started planting and I, I started creating our own food to feed her. Hmm. We having that purpose in life that we can start it because it's our intention to provide good food or it's our intention is good of to help our our loved ones mm -hmm. and seeing that um looking back seven years ago when we started our garden it's only a 300 square meter garden and now we already have our own event place we have our own sustainable gardening we have our own loft with a lot of birds and we have we're providing our own sustainable food that feed our, then uh, we, we provide to our guests and um, customers. So having that spark, having that, you know, um, intention to do good, it will direct you to a different journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's really amazing for you to experience. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and listening to your story and listening to your, your slide, and um, it actually uh, gave me that perspective. Yeah, we can start small. We can start really um, mm -hmm. not putting too much at the moment, but as long as we love what we are doing, it will direct us to a different direction, that, uh, which is really magical. Yes, that's well said. <laughs> and Sophie, for my last question, what do you think would be the future of remote learning and how it going to be aligned for the future of work for our kids? I mean, I think COVID's changed everything. I, um, you know, I was just reading an article today about, I was reading a couple articles, but one about how, you know, COVID has changed work forever. Um, yeah. and how we work, how offices are run. And I think it's changed education forever. Sure. I don't think people realized how much could be done remotely until True. COVID happened and we had to. Um, and people were forced to adapt and they did, you know, True. people pivoted and they, they did it. And I think, I think it's amazing because it puts the world at our fingertips. You know, we can be, look at us, you know, yeah. look at this. We're doing a summit. I've never an online summit, together, right? If we weren't remote working and remote learning, um, and I've met so many people around the world, you know, through remote learning and through remote working, and I can, you know, even from my kids and from myself, we take courses from people all over the world. I've connected yeah. with people. Um, it puts the world at our fingertips. It opens up so many job opportunities. Um, you know, like you and I both, we've created work for ourselves, you know, um, online and, um, we can be home with our kids, our kids, you know, my kids are not going to have to move away to get jobs or things like that. So I, I just think that for me, I mean, it's not for everybody, right? It, none of these things are for everybody, but for me, as somebody who wants a life where I can be at home with my kids and enjoy their company and, you know, I don't need to be going out and seeing a lot of other people. It has just given us a very fulfilling life. True. Yeah. And very exciting. Yeah. I should say. I mean, we do, <laughs> I think we do, you know, we do have to be careful that we don't become hermits, right? You know, yeah. I think, I think another way that we get inspiration to be creative is new experiences, right? So True. that means saying yes again, saying yes if someone invites you out to something, um, you know, saying yes to trying new things outside of the house as well. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to just stay at home forever, but, um, you know, we want to experience life. But I love that we have the flexibility to do this stuff as a family and grow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Sophie, for sharing that. Um, Sophie, um, 
kind of invite our viewers to follow you in your socials. And um, if you have anything that uh, you want to share, please do. Okay. Before, um, yeah. So here's my website. Um, it's mycupruns.over.ca. Uh, we're actually launching another website in the spring, which I'm very excited about. Um, it's called Story Writing Academy, and that's nice. just helping people um, with creative writing. So we're super excited about that. Um, that's my personal email there. That comes right to me. So um, if anyone wants to reach out and talk about anything, that's where you can find me. Um, I've got my social feeds at the bottom. I'm most active on Instagram, though. So if that's, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to connect, that's the best place. Um, but I post up, I post blog post updates on Facebook and Pinterest. And then um, I, I wanted to offer, you know, if people want to get started with, you know, creative writing and want to have something, you know, that's put together for them that is, you know, a curriculum that prioritizes creativity and, you know, individual thought, um, I wanted to offer you guys 50% off of that creative writing bundle. Um, so nice. that's a place one can go if they want to go and check that out. Yeah, okay. To all our viewers, please check out the um, the link so you can uh, actually avail the 50% uh, discount offer. Uh, yeah, to all our viewers, thank you so much for, um, for joining our summit today. Sophie, I'm so grateful to have you as one of our lovely speaker for our summit and looking forward for more um, collaboration with, your, with you and your brand. And yeah. Thank you, Sophie. You have a great day and looking forward to collaborate with you more you in so the much. future. It's been, it's been lovely chatting with you as always. Um, and I just want to wish everybody, you know, a really good year in their homeschool um, and just encourage everybody to um, just take a deep breath. <laughs> um, don't feel overwhelmed. You're probably learning a lot over the course of this summit. Don't feel overwhelmed that you have to like implement everything you learned right away. Um, just let it soak in and, um, you know, take your time. You know, it's, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint and you've got this. <laughs> All right. Sophie, thank you. Enjoy oh the rest of your morning. Okay. Take care. Bye for now.